Hey folks, how's it going? My name is Jay and this is the fifth episode of Take 2. Now Take 2 is a series of videos where I review gear that has already been reviewed by Soundstage. A second opinion if you so will. Today we are taking a look at this speaker right here, the Focal Shape 65 speakers. And like the Head Type 7 loudspeakers that I reviewed last time, the Focal Shape 65 is a all analog active loudspeaker. This speaker was reviewed by Gordon Brockhaus on SoundStageSimplify.com on June 15, 2020. And you can read it by visiting SoundStageSimplify.com or by clicking on the link below this video. Now, I am sure most of you guys are familiar with the name Focal. They have been in the business for over 40 years making incredible audio gear, mainly speakers. Something that perhaps some of you may not know is that Focal is a company that is very innovative with their driver designs and are very well known for their drivers. First, let's take a look at the tweeter. For those of you that are not familiar with the newer Focal speakers, you may find the tweeter to be very different looking than other tweeters. Looks kind of flipped over, doesn't it? This is the famous Focal tweeter. It's called the M-shaped inverted dome tweeter. And according to Focal, the shape and material of this tweeter has quite a few benefits. The shape allows the tweeter to be much more rigid with lower distortion, but most importantly, the shape reduces directivity which means a larger sweet spot in terms of listening. The waveguide here delivers equal horizontal and vertical directivity. The material used in this tweeter is the magnesium, which has great damping uh, properties, and aluminum, which is very rigid. And the two metals combined also reduces distortion. Now this is the 6.5 inch woofer and it's called the flax sandwich cone. It took Focal engineers over five years to come up with this design. The flax cone are a sandwich design which has two thin layers of glass fiber and flax fiber sandwiched in between. These type of drivers are very rigid and light at the same time, which is ideal for this type of drivers. However, when two or more materials are used, like a composite uh, material, they have poor control of vibrations uh, usually and it cannot compete with Kevlar or aluminum drivers. But according to Focal, flax fiber has a unique property that allows it to have excellent damping properties that rivals with even materials like Kevlar or aluminum. This woofer also has the patented tuned mass damper technology built into it using two tubular rings. Now, tuned mass dampers are used in primarily in buildings and I remember learning about this back in my university studies in physics but I am not going to bore you with all the technicalities. Basically speaking, when we have a tall building like the CN Tower and they have their natural frequency that they want to sway back and forth. So to avoid that from happening, we have something called mass dampers that are tuned to that specific frequency that allows to basically cancel out the swaying frequency so that the CN Tower can stay tall without swaying back and forth. CN Tower specifically uses uh, two rings and, you know, and to, to fight that. And similar to that, the woofer here uses two rings on the suspension that's tuned to fight the resonances to avoid the formation of the cone due to the resonances without sacrificing any dynamics. Again, this is the oversimplified version, but you can definitely do more research on this subject if you want to learn more. Here you can see 6.5 inch passive radiators on each side of the speakers. So there's one of these on the other side as well. The reason they did this instead of a port is because port limits the ability to have the speakers closer to the front wall in most cases due to the bass becoming boomy and all that stuff, which is a problem when it comes to monitors when they have to be placed on a desk or a very confined space. By having the speakers have this passive radiator uh, instead on the side like this allows the speakers to be placed closer to the front wall without having that problem with the port. In the back, we have low frequency adjustment that allows you to adjust the frequencies below 250 Hertz by plus minus six dB. And then we have high frequency adjustment for frequencies above 4.5 kilohertz and you can adjust it by plus minus three dB. You also have the low end mid range frequency dial that allows you to adjust the range by plus minus three dB. Now these adjustments are beneficial if you ever need to adjust any of the frequencies depending on the positioning of the speakers or your room. 
you also have a high frequency filter pass here, which the option allows you to add a subwoofer if you wanted to with settings of crossover frequencies at 45, 60, and 90 hertz. Without a subwoofer, you leave this dial at full range setting, which is identified by the letters FR. Although I feel like these have serious bass and we'll talk about that later in this video, if you want to add a subwoofer for that, for that extra bass extension in the lower bass, you can do that by adding a subwoofer. And like I have mentioned, this is an active loudspeaker and has amplifiers built into the speakers. So you may need a source, a DAC, a preamplifier, but you don't need an amplifier. And unlike typical monitors that uses class D amplification, the Focal here uses 80 watts class AB amplification for the woofer and 25 watt class AB amplification for the tweeter. From the active monitors I have personally reviewed, I found that most active monitors that are meant for near field listening to struggle when compared directly to speakers that are meant for more of a traditional audiophile stereo, stereo listening setups. Now this is not a real surprise since speakers are designed and optimized for specific situations. But the Focal Shape 65 here was a speaker that I truly loved in both near field and stereo listening. Granted, they perform in a slightly different way in each of these situations, so we will talk about that. But for both of my near field and traditional stereo listening, test, I use my Hegel H190, which is a all-in-one integrated amplifier with a streamer, DAC, preamp, and an amplifier built in. I use the pre outs to connect it to the Shape 65 speakers. So in near field listening, these are probably one of the best when it comes to pure amount of detail and high frequency extension. The highs are incredibly refined and sounds effortless with no strain. Now, it does not sound sharp or harsh in most cases. Now, I say most in most cases because these and near field will give you exactly what you need to hear without any type of exaggeration in any of the frequencies. Which, which means that when you play a recording that is poorly recorded, it will definitely be able to pick that up, especially in near field situations but it was surprisingly more forgiving than I had imagined. Although I could definitely tell that the sound resolution has dropped when I was playing, for example, YouTube or other form of lossy media, I did not find them to be grainy or sharp uh, or unlistenable. Um, as long as the original recording was not recorded with elevation in the sibilant regions. Like in case of some rap or EGM tracks, like it was totally fine unless it was those kind of uh, poorly recorded tracks. Same thing in the mid-range. The, the instrument and vocals sound natural without any edginess to the sound. I found them quite smooth to uh, in the mid-range with no odd sibilance that bothered my ears. The bass is extremely textured and well-defined. And I mean seriously well-defined. However, in near field, they can be tad shy in the bass region and I want it slightly more. Now, I usually leave all the settings at 0 dB in the back settings for review purposes, but this time I use the bass adjustment to slightly increase the bass by 2 dB on each speaker, and it was perfect for my taste. It still retained all the texture and definition in the bass region, but just a slightly more. Let's call it a guilty pleasure, okay? Soundstage is quite large for an active monitor that are meant for near field listening especially. I was quite satisfied with the amount of soundstage I was getting out of these. It does stretch past the speakers and provide wide and deep soundstage, uh, even in near field listening. What's amazing is that I am able to know exactly where each instrument are and it is extremely easy to pick out those instruments because of the detailed presentation. It was almost freakish at times. Center imaging is incredibly pinpoint and creates a large enough sweet spot that I don't have to keep my head in one spot all the time. Overall, the speakers sounded very neutral to my ears. Now in stereo listening, these are a different beast. When it comes to imaging and sound staging, it is still freakishly good as it was in near field listening, 
uh, with slightly better sound staging as it is with most speakers when put into stereo listening environments. Um, and the mid-range and highs are still has the same qualities I mentioned in near field. However, the mid-range instruments and vocals have more weight to the sound in stereo listening and highs are still incredibly refined without losing any composure when it's cranked up. This is already very surprising since near field monitors tend to fail in one or two of these their strong characteristics when put into stereo listening spaces. But what's more impressive is the change in the bass. Perhaps because I am increasing the volume more in stereo listening positions, the passive radiator starts to really kick in and the bass becomes authoritative and everything starts to have more weight to the sound. Still very textured and well-defined, but it is so much more dynamic. It also sounds to me like a floor standing speaker and not just any floor standing speaker, but like a properly full sized one. The sound is big, dynamic, authority, great slam, and you can feel it with your body. At times, I had to tone down the bass by negative 2 dB using the dial in the back. But seriously, I was having so much fun with this speaker that I wanted to delay this review so I can play around with these speakers even longer. I went through each of the tracks and each track impressed me so much. And these are tracks that I listen to all the time. For example, when I was playing All Your Love by Sarah Kay, the bass was incredibly powerful with incredible impact and detail with each instrument and vocals that I just left in disbelief that this type of sound was coming out from two active monitors that were meant for near field. Now in terms of placement, these are absolutely no brainer. They sounded incredible close to the front wall or slightly out in the open. I found them a little bit more airy and spacious sounding when I did pull them out into the room a little bit had them slightly tilted towards me, but not too much. And this gave me a great sense of sound staging with pinpoint imaging. And like I said, these sound great in lower volumes as well, but these seriously become a different beast in mid to higher listening volumes in stereo listening. And so in conclusion, I believe these speakers are probably one of the best monitors a professional can ask for in a small home studio or whatnot. But really, these excel for those that want a kick-ass speaker in their living room, listening room, or for a small, simple system. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.